All right, so we're gonna go see if we can find Limnea stagnalis today. Now we've got about an hour and 45 minute drive uh, to this location where they may or may not be present. Uh, so that's nearly like a four hour round trip just to walk up to a body of water and say, huh, oh, is there any pond snails in here? Uh, if not, we just drove all this way for no reason. Um, but along the way, we're gonna check the uh, Helix Pomatia site. So, you know, uh, they might be out, might not be out, but I feel like the weather's been warm enough where they probably are out. Uh, so we'll check the Helix Pomatia, we'll check the Limnea Stagnalis, uh, and I am putting my faith in science here because um, I actually got this location data from a paper. It was called the Larval Trematode Assemblages in the Snail Limnea Stagnalis from Southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, published in 1998. Uh, so they were uh, testing out, uh, to, you know, not testing out, but doing an experiment, whatever you want to call it, uh, seeing, I don't even remember what exactly they were testing, if it was just a survey uh, type of research on the schistosoma, uh, that are in the Limnea. It's not anything like Schistosoma mansoni, which can infect humans. I um, believe it's Schistosoma douthiti. So uh, we're going to go and see, because hopefully the snails they were using for this study, if they are, you know, some kind of respectable scientist, have some kind of professional degree, uh, hopefully they're able to identify a pond snail with reasonable accuracy. Uh, so anyways, let's go drive over there, see if these uh, Limnea are there, let's see if they're Limnea stagnalis and not some other snail, uh, and maybe see some Helix pomatia. So about to drive over, and what are we going to find on today's trip? Well, let's find out. All right, so we're going to do a quick jump out of the car, uh, because we're going to check this drainage ditch on the side of the road and I have already checked this out and I don't think Limnea stagnalis is here but there are a number of snails unfortunately it might be that lattice lavella elodes um but just want to do a quick check here to see what we have on the side of the road in the ditch all right so there we have two of them it's hard to tell if these are Limnea or if they are more of that lattice lavella or stagnicola. Uh, there don't really seem to be any larger snails, and I think the limnae are a little bit larger. Uh, but then again, this is kind of a, you know, small habitat. Uh, so I think uh, we're gonna keep moving on to see what else we can find. Okay, so we've made it out to a more open body of water, and I'm gonna flip the camera around to show you something. All right, so down there, those white things you see are shells of Limnea stagnalis. So they do exist. Unfortunately, that water is a little bit too deep to go in with uh, the boots I have. And I'm not really seeing any uh, live ones kind of close to the shore, you know, hoping they'd be uh, kind of up on uh, these structures or maybe in the grasses, but basically what I'm going to do is, I guess, uh, take a good hard look around uh, and see if I can find any live ones, but this is a good indication because if the shells are here, uh, that means the adults are somewhere. So let me go take a look and see if I can finally find some of these. All right, so I fished one of these out of the water. There is a shell of a Limnea stagnalis. Uh, yet to find a live one, though. All right, so starting to lose hope. Very uncommon for me. I try and stay pretty optimistic. And I was thinking, man, we probably won't find one today, but here, right on the edge of this floating, uh, you know, raft is a Limnea stagnalis. So we finally found one. Uh, let's see how many we can find. All right, so we found two. And that's probably a breeding pair. These should be hermaphrodites, if I remember correctly little bit of a challenge so i'm going to get on my stomach on this boardwalk and lean down i probably can't get a good view of this take my hat off and this might be a chinese mystery snail but we'll see my 
cart stopped because I thought I dropped it. But we have our second Limnea stagnalis. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about these snails when I'm editing this video. Uh, so here we can see the boardwalk out into the pond and this grassy area, or maybe they're reeds or sedges, whatever. There's some kind of junky grass growing here. Uh, there was no Limnea that I could really find, and I thought, oh, maybe the young ones are here, but I looked for about an hour, honestly. I couldn't find any Limnea in the shallows, and it was only out in the deeper water at least, I'd say, four to five feet deep is where the Limnea stagnalis liked to live, so that might be a useful piece of information for anyone looking for these. Uh, and so I, you know, walked to the end of the boardwalk, and there were empty shells on the bottom there, and of course we found the live ones, uh, mostly on those floating support systems that were holding up this uh, ramp or a boardwalk uh, in the, uh, you know, not middle of the lake, but out into the lake. So thankfully somebody built that boardwalk, uh, because without it, I honestly don't think uh, we would have been successful on this trip unless I got those, you know, uh, chest high rubber waders and walked, you know, five feet out or five feet deep into the water. Uh, so coming up here is just one more shot of the uh, Limnea sitting on that uh, black plastic floater and three of those were found on the floaters and one of them I found uh, kind of just on a emerging aquatic plant at the bottom of the lake. So I took two of them out put them in a container so now we can get a better look at these snails and talk about them a little bit more. Uh, they have that classic Limnea Day look with the elongated shell and triangular tentacles. A very elegant looking snail. It's also pretty big for a pond snail, so um, I think it deserves the name, uh, the common name, the Great Pond Snail. Now, uh, since I've become obsessed with these, uh, probably to a small psychotic degree over the past two weeks, but that might just be the quarantine, um, I started looking into, you know, who has this? Is this a common species in the pet trade? Do people have these in their aquariums? And it doesn't seem like it. You know, when I looked at the aquatic snails, everybody's got the, you know, uh, Pomacea, apple snails, or actually those are probably uh, mystery snails. And then I think uh, there's a different uh, species in the Ampelaridae, which is called the apple snails, uh, both related, but that's neither here nor there. Or the Nerites, or the Malaysian trumpet snail garbage. Uh, but there's no Limnea stagnalis. I'm like, really? Nobody's keeping them and breeding these? And I thought, well, maybe they're illegal to collect. Um, and that would be a whole nother mess to look at. Uh, can they cross state lines? I mean, they're just pond snails, so I'm sure they are, uh, but it would probably be a mess to figure that out. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this isn't established in the pet trade yet, and I'd kind of like to see it because I feel like, you know, this is much cooler than any other aquatic snail. Uh, so anyways, I decided to look at the phylogeny of these just because, I don't know, I guess you know, I like wasting my time uh, obsessing over snails. Um, and so I looked at it, and I read the phylogeny, and I'm like, what is this? This is a mess. But I thought, no, I, I'm either too drunk on absinthe again, or what's most likely the scenario is that I'm dumb, and I just can't interpret this because my brain is too small. Uh, and so I saw Radix in a clade, and I was like, okay, well, at least Radix is in a nice clade. Uh, but then you've got Limnea stagnalis grouped with other stagnicolas and Omphiscola. And then you got uh, different uh, Limnea species, like Limnea humulus, uh, in a different clade. And then apparently that might not even be Limnea, that might be Galba. And so I thought, this is a huge mess. I must be reading this incorrectly. Uh, and I saw, and you know, it was a Wikipedia article, so I thought, you know, maybe this is just a, you know, bad reference. Uh, but I looked, you know, further, and apparently the nomenclature, uh, it's been confusing in the Limnaeidae systematics, and I thought, you know, this is this is really the great pond snail, and it's not, you know, a perfect, nice, organized, elegant phylogeny. Like, isn't everybody as obsessed with this as I am? 
Uh, but apparently not, and apparently the, uh, a lot of the phylogenetics for these are based on phenotypic resemblances. Uh, so I was about to call my old professor down in Carbondale and say, yo, listen, Dr. Andy, we have a huge emergency. Uh, have you ever heard of Limnea Day before? Uh, but then I figured that's, you know, what a dumb idea. <laughs> and of course, I'm not serious. This is just a joke for the video. Uh, but I felt like it because I was just so amazed. Like, really? Limnea Day? This should be like the most classic well-known of the pond snails, but I'm probably just obsessing uh, way too much over these. But anyways, there's the clip of them crawling around this little container. Really nice looking pond snail. I mean, I've said this before and I'm probably biased, but there's just something about their shape and their size uh, that just seems really interesting and elegant to me. Uh, so here's the last shot of the Limnea stagnalis and we can start wrapping up this video uh, in the next scene. video. So, I'll probably come back maybe in a month once things start to warm up a little bit more. I feel like then everything will start getting active, moving around in the lake. Uh, will I record a video on it? Uh, probably not because I think this one is sufficient just to kind of demonstrate uh, or show the species. Uh, but just for, you know, personal fun, I might come back and look around once again. Um, so that's it for this site. Nice small little pine tree. I feel like this would be a good place to find pre bonsai material. There's some nice uh, spruces and cedars around. Don't know if you can dig it up. Don't really care because I have enough uh, pre bonsai material to play around with where I don't really need it. Uh, but finally, found that Limnea, so I can at least confirm that around uh, the Sockville area of Wisconsin, uh, the, the species is present in larger bodies of water. Does the range extend further south than that? Don't know. Would have to go check more of the bodies of water. Uh, like I said, I'll go down the road, see if I can find anything in a different body of water, uh, but this might be it for now. Actually, while we're still in this area, I'm gonna go shopping today. Maybe not the best idea, but I am shopping for something essential, and they don't have this uh, close to my house, but apparently they might have it here. So let's go see what I'm gonna buy today.